But he's gonna start talking now. He remembers that. Well, he's the one that hid behind Casper that time. Remember? Remember when we took Casper and him in there, and he went behind Casper on the floor and hid. And you went to go so get you Casper, and Casper got you. <laughs> <laughs> Casper protected him. It's taken us what seven, eight years with him, and he's really gotten to the point where he. So well, we know he's at least that age, and he's yeah. got to be double that age, probably. He, uh, he now will come and get out of our hand. He'll come get on, on us and stuff without having to force him that issue. When we first got him, it was him and Mama. Uh, Mickey and Minnie, and they were used strictly for breeding. They were never cage touched, size. Never touched, and used strictly for breeding. Mm -hmm. And they found out quickly at 7 o'clock in the morning if they would get in a fight. Who's Mozart? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a cage that we gave us. <laughs> no, we got Andy Hartzell. Okay. But, um, I don't, as I said, we don't know what's wrong, but I just, I want to make sure he's okay. You want me to get him out? So you, you can get a worm him. if you want. We brought worms so you could talk to him. Mm -hmm. As I said, I think the biggest thing was, so as I said, they were getting along good for the... About is like getting him out of the cage. Okay. Okay, I'm going to step out because it's my brain... He gets panicky and... Just go. With my brain collapsed, like it Just is blood vessels, I get nervous. Okay. <laughs> no, I seriously, I have He stresses out. That's why I stress out easy. Come on, Dad. I know you're probably going to bite me. Come on. I know. Come on. Come on. Come on. What you're doing? So look at the kingdom. Oh no. Okay. What is that? Oh, testicles. No, I just didn't <laughs> notice it being up that far. <laughs> I know where his things oh, are because he oh, shows them all oh, the time. Oh, all right, all right. It's okay, Mickey. I know. I mean, he can move them. He's just not. Well, that's not that too painful. Well. That's a good sign. I'm pretty sure that is poo. So. days ago his eyes were really recessed like he was dehydrated well it looks like he's got some loose stool here so we're gonna check that out oh it's okay, okay. it's okay oh, it's okay he's okay it's he's okay. actually a very good baby yeah he's and not he, being bad at all he he oh, he takes to more to female oh ow, 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 he ow, takes better ow, to females ow. than he does to males but and his teeth don't look as aged as you guys were talking like I, I don't know that's why I say it. We, we're not sure how old he is. You're so grumpy monkey. Say no, you should see my daughter. There you go. Bite the glove. Yes, five dollars. Ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Not so bad at all. I 
thought I was gonna get some really bad news. Okay, here we go. Let's set you down. Here's a cage at. It's okay. Let him go. See what I'm talking about with his legs? Yeah. My belly. I was gonna say, somebody hungry? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, give me a few minutes and we'll get this. Okay. So I can put him back in the cage yeah. or not? Mm -hmm. Okay, you gonna leave that running or? Sure. Catch you doing things just what you're doing. Yeah, you cannot jump very far. Come on. There you go. Okay, um, it's a good thing I take my time. How long do you want to get the medicine for? A week and then we'll recheck. Okay. There are some mild signs of rickets, okay? Mm -hmm. um, the, the tibias are really, really soft and they're bendy, um, but it wasn't painful, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I find that kind of odd. Uh, and I'm one, And at that point in time, I figured when I saw the loose stool, there may be some reasons for that as well. So I went to the stool and I'm seeing tons and tons of rods. And of those rods, about 25% of them are moving, which means you get to go from a basically a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth to a, uh, which we call SIBO to Vibrio, okay? Vibrio was when we see those same rods that are highly motile and moving all around. It wasn't until I stopped looking that I actually saw them moving, so they're really, really slow. They're not the usual species that we see in monkeys or, or and so forth, but it turns out that they, uh, there are, are byproducts that a lot of these highly motile bacteria put off that can be kind of a nerve toxin or make them a little weak in the back end or make them worse. Um, they were trying to make a connection between Guillain-Barre syndrome and Campylobacter a few years back. And this is just me spouting off stuff that you, you may go research later and see, oh yeah, he mentioned this while I was, uh, while I was in the room, if you're gonna start Googling these things. Um, anyway, they did find a connection, but they weren't able to prove the connection. In other words, statistically speaking, um, 90 plus percent of the patients that had Guillain-Barre syndrome, uh, which is basically like a nerve toxin, um, had Campylobacter, but not all Campylobacter patients had Guillain-Barre syndrome. But there was definitely a, st a significant um, statistical, you know, connection there. Um, and that was about 10, 15 years ago. I'd, I've not heard anything new about that since, but maybe I should start looking again. Um, Anyway, but whenever I see that, uh, usually it means there's going to be some problems. Uh, if I have uh, to put big species up, if there's a ferret, if I see one of those organisms in a ferret, then I usually treat them, and they usually tend to improve, you know, by leaps and bounds. When it comes to uh, to my daisy, I almost whenever she's down, I'll do a fecal on her, and I'll notice this bacteria, and I'll treat those, and we get a whole lot better. That's fine. That will help with some of us. That might explain why we're not feeling is much back there, but it's still not explaining the rickets part. As we know, UVB bulbs go bad. I just okay. replaced it. Brand okay. new. And we actually had that one only about six months, and um, it was dropped. So we <laughs> replaced. So, we, <laughs> so they, they're relatively new. Okay. And it's a high again, wattage. It's possible that this diarrhea that we're having secondary to the organisms is just keeping them from absorbing the calcium that's in the diet, okay? But what I would try to do if y'all were you guys is try to do a little bit extra calcium and stuff in the diet. Um, feed them some things that are higher in calcium when it comes to your, your fruits, things like broccoli. Um, you know, if you're getting to eat collard greens, that's always a big plus. Um, what else could I tell you? What about green beans? What, does that have any? Because he really loves green beans. It, the, I mean, the fresh fresh green beans. Yeah, offhand, I really can't. I mean, I, I really wish I could tell you more about green beans. And I, I probably should do some research. Um, I know that they they love the green beans, and I go do. to the farmers market and get fresh, and I just wash them off, and, hmm. and I give them the green beans. That's their favorite. Well, and I, that and I get them the the ones from the nutritional aisle, whether the dried mm -hmm. green beans, and they they went through a half a box of that last night. But they'll, they'll eat that, but I'll give them whatever I can give them. And plus, I've been making Just sure he, he always eats his mealworms. Yeah, and maybe you should pre preload your mealworms. Give your mealworms collard greens. Okay. Oops. Um, 
Collard greens probably are the one thing that I in this area we have year round. You can you can always buy them. They're dirt cheap. They have. I go to the farmer market every Tuesday, Thursday. So yeah, okay. they have the perfect calcium phosphorus ratio, which is two to one, which is great for most growing mammals, growing reptiles, um, you know, and birds and so forth. So, and it's also got twice as much as they would as the growing one needs. So they're like the perfect green when it comes to something you can feed that might actually bring in extra calcium phosphorus. And if you can't get the monkey to eat it specifically, then if you were to preload the, the worms and you know and mix those things with other foods they're eating you probably are helping that way as well um so that would be you know that's always a good recommendation but we're we're not 100 percent all rickets i think you know all, all soft bone disease and metabolic bone disease uh but i think that's part of the reason our buddy's not jumping and leaping i mean watching him go from here to the floor he should have been able to make it to here oh yeah no problem um uh that's why I brought him in because he wasn't getting good distance. And I said, I didn't know if it was because of him not be getting the food that he should be getting because of her over the last three weeks, is what I was assuming. He's, he's not coming out right now. <laughs> Man, he's hiding. What are you doing in there? Ooh, he's poopy and messy. I'm hiding. But anyway, that's. Uh, the that would be my diagnosis for the day. Do um, we need to give them medicine? Yeah, they're mixing up medicine right now. Do we need to give it to them, to others? To the other two. Chances are if one's got it, they've all got it. They were all in the same case. Yeah, yeah. then I would go ahead and do it. And you should have more than enough. Uh, this mixing it up in 0.1 mil twice a day should be sufficient. Um, may want to recheck this guy next week, okay, um, to see how we're doing. And, you know, about the same time, and we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. All right. I'm glad we came. As I said, I, I just didn't feel comfortable about him. Hey, you. In the cage. Wake up. No. Oh, no.